Welcome to another speaking tip. Now today, I don't want to beat around the bush, but if you want your audiences to be tickled pink with your speeches, you need to watch out that you don't wind up in a pickle because you decided to be a goody two shoes and turned a blind eye to using idioms that your audience is not familiar with. Now I'm not pulling your leg. I wouldn't be caught dead using idioms my audience doesn't understand. It's a piece of cake to do this correctly. And if you want your audience to be happy as a clam, use correct idioms for your audience. Look, the ball's in your court. Use idioms correctly, and it's all downhill from here. And next thing you know, Bob's your uncle. Now, I just used a bunch of idioms, and the truth of the matter is, if you're from the U.S., you probably understood most of what I said. But if you're from another country, which a lot of my list is, a lot of things I said didn't make any sense to you. Now, just so we understand this, what an idiom is, is a phrase or a saying, a colloquial saying in a local area that the meaning of the individual words does not add up to the meaning of the phrase. It has a unique phrase. Now, I just used some common American idioms, which are beat around the bush, tickled pink, in a pickle, goody two shoes, turn, turn a blind eye, pulling your leg, wouldn't be caught dead, piece of cake, happy as a clam, the ball's in your court, it's all downhill from here, Bob's your uncle is actually Australian. I threw that in to throw the Americans off just a little bit. It's really important, I've found, even speaking in different regional areas around in the same country. And I know in the US, we, there are certain local sayings, local colloquialisms, local terms. One of the things, I grew up in the Midwest and there's a little section in, in the US and in, in America around Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, Ohio, in that area where you call soda pop or soda, which is called, which Coca-Cola, Pepsi, 7-Up, those things, it's called pop. And I grew up and that was pop. And I came to California and I was gonna go to a party and I said, I'll bring some pop. And people would look at me like, what? I said, I'll bring, I'll bring some pop. And they go, oh, soda, soda pop. Oh, okay, I understand what you're saying. Out here, they call it soda, they don't call it pop. But back in the Midwest where I grew up, we didn't call it soda. You know, soda was something you sprinkled on the, the streets to melt the snow. <laughs> Call it pop. The same thing is true with different colloquial sayings. And when you're speaking to an audience, you have to make sure that they're going to understand what you're saying. Now, as an example, when I grew up, we had some different sayings back in the Midwest. Somebody would say, they're trying to get me to buy a pig and a polk. Well, what's that mean? That meant they were trying to get you to buy something without examining it is what it meant, because a polk was another name for a bag, and if you put a pig in a bag, you couldn't get to see the pig, and you're trying to sell them the pig. Another one was don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Somebody's giving you something, don't go, and ex don't go examine it. And the meaning behind that was the simple fact that you could tell the horse's age by how worn their teeth were. So if somebody's giving you a horse, don't go look in their mouth, because you might find out it's a really old horse. Another one was an empty wagon, uh, excuse me, an empty wagon makes the most noise. What that means is a person who's empty is the, usually the loudest in a group. And something that you may have heard, it says there it's moving as slow as molasses in January. And if you lived in a cold climate, you know <laughs> how slow molasses moves in January. So the point being is when you put your speeches together, you wanna to make sure that the words you're using communicate to the audience. Now, I have been caught on this a number of times, and it's the reason I bring the speaking tip up today. I've spoken, I said, all over the U.S., but I've also spoken all over the world, and there are times that there are phrases and sayings that are just common to me that I wouldn't even, I don't even look at them as idioms. Don't consider them idioms. And, you know, it's like if somebody said, I go, I knew he was pulling my leg. I don't consider that an idiom. I would say that just the same way I would say, turn the lights on or everybody here raise their hand. So one of the things I would do is I would have somebody local watch my speech or read my speech. And I would just ask them, is there anything in there that doesn't make sense or that 
wouldn't be said that way in the country I'm in. Early after winning the world championship, I was giving a talk in England. I was in London and I made this comment. I was taking questions from the audience and I made this comment that I go, yeah, after that, I mean, what am I, chop liver? And that's something that's commonly said in the US that chop liver is something that's normal, ordinary, nothing special about it is what it means. Okay, But when you just say chopped liver, the audience looked at me like, what's he talking about? Am I chopped liver? You know, it's like in the same way, if I would say, what am I, a fried egg? Nobody would know. I don't know what a fried egg is. Nobody would know what that is. So just to give you an example, because I have a lot of US people on this list, I want to give you some Australian idioms because I've been, I spent a lot of time in Australia. There's different things that come up and I've, I've listened to. And one of them is I would hear it's, it's the, the guy can't tell for chalk from cheese or it's chalk and cheese. I would use chalk and cheese all the time. Well, it's real simple. Chalk's different than cheese and the person can't tell the difference between the two items that they're, they're looking at or the problems with the two people or you know, they, they're, they're having a difficult time differentiating something, but it's totally obvious how different they are. Another one is a fair suck on the sauce bottle. Okay, what it means, I just want to be, I want to be treated fairly. But if somebody said, yeah, I just want a fair suck on the sauce bottle, you're going, what does he mean if we said that in the US? Have a Captain Cook, just means take a look around. Okay. And another one is, what's a John Dory? What's the John Dory? That just means what's happening, what's going on? But if somebody walked up or they're in a speech and they said, I walked in, I said, what's the John Dory? We'd all look at each other like, what's he talking about? We don't know the idiom. Do the Harry. That means to disappear. It, it actually had one of their prime ministers that got sucked away in the ocean and disappeared and the body was never found and his name was Harry. So that's where it came from. Do the Harry, just disappear. And the last one is hit the frog and hit the hit the frog and toad. Okay, what does it mean? It means an, a US, an American idiom would be hit the road. We're not gonna go hit the road, no. We're gonna go get on the road and get moving. We're gonna start heading towards our destination. So an Australian idiom for that would be hit the frog and toad. Okay, so here's the, here's the key point. When we're communicating, we have enough going on without confusing our audiences. So make sure the phrases that you're using communicate to the audience you're speaking to. And I've seen this, doesn't even have to be geographic differences. I've seen socioeconomic age differences you know, just different audiences to how I am doesn't communicate because I will say something that they, they, that they don't understand. Just as an example, I grew up with records, vinyl, they got pressed. Most of the people younger than me had CDs. They don't know what, you know, it sounds like a record skipping. And that was something that was very common. You put the you know, the needle on the record, and then there'd be a little bump in it, it would sit there and skip or skip a couple lines and stuff, but they, they don't understand. It's like a skipping record. That wouldn't make any sense to them because they did, didn't experience a skipping record. Okay, so that's the message for today. Watch your idioms, make sure that you communicate what, make sure what you say the audience can communicate. And with that, the definition of communication is what gets duplicated what gets understood by your audience. It's not what you say, that's not communication. What communication is, is what the audience understands. All right, the ball's in your court.